good morning students today i will discuss about placenta placenta is a feto maternal organ means it is made up of fetal component and maternal component and it attaches the embryo or the fetus with the wall of pregnant uterus there is a exchange of nutrition and waste products from this placenta so it provide nutrition through the baby and it eliminates the waste products from the baby and it also provides immunity to the baby from uh, different types of infections and it also act as a barrier and uh, preventing several types of infections or the toxic substances from the uh, um, uh, from the mother which are which can come via the placenta but it is preventing or acting as a barrier for that infections or the to toxic substances it also synthesizes very important hormone that is progesterone which is maintenance for uh, responsible for maintenance of pregnancy now if we see the structure of the placenta it is circular or the disc shape organ in a human being at full term its diameter is around 15 to 20 cm and thickness is 3 cm its weight is around 500 grams surfaces there are two surfaces maternal surface and the fetal surface and both surfaces are divided by uh, different septas and uh, it will lead to formation of cotyledons now it has got two components maternal component and the fetal component because it is made up of maternal tissue and fetal tissue both maternal component or the decidua that is called as decidua bacillus and the fetal component is called as chorion frondosum or the chorion plate normal attachment of the placenta is in the upper uterine segment but if uh, it is attached in the lower uterine segment then it is called as placenta previa in this regime orangish part is upper uterine segment and if it is in the lower part that is purplish has been shown in this diagram then it is called as placenta previa now types of the placenta previa there are four degrees of placenta previa the first diagram is showing the first degree in which this uh, pinkish one is the attached uh, placenta and it is not reaching the internal loss this is internal loss so at, uh, placenta is not reaching up, uh, up to the internal loss then it is first degree in the second degree placenta is reaching to the margin of the internal loss then it is second degree when placenta is covering the internal loss then it is called as third degree and uh, but uh, placenta is covering the internal loss but when the cervix is dilated this uh, will uncover the placenta uh, the internal loss then it is called as third degree so in third degree normal condition the placenta is covering the internal loss but when the cervix is dilated it will uncover the internal loss so it is third degree and in the fourth degree placenta uh, is covering the internal loss completely so even when the cervix is dilated it will close or the cover the internal loss so it is called as fourth degree of placenta previa in the fourth degree there there are no chances of the normal delivery because placenta is covering the internal loss completely so we have to do the cesarean section in this condition now the structure of the placenta it has got two surfaces maternal surface and the fetal surface fetal surface it is smooth and shiny because the amnion is covering the surface and on the surface the there is attachment of the umbilical cord in human being this umbilical cord is attached in the central part of the placenta the, so the central attachment of the umbilical cord is there in human and uh, through the umbilical cord umbilical blood vessels are coming and these vessels ramify in on this surface and maternal surface is rough and it has got cobblestone a uh, cobblestone appearance because of presence of presence of grooves and notch elevations so the surface is rough here these are the original pictures of the placenta this is showing the fetal surface because umbilical cord is attached on the surface the surface is covered with amnion which is transparent and shiny and the under the amnion there are blood vessels you can see the blood vessel which are branching on this under the surface and here this is the maternal surface which is rough and irregular now cotyledons how the cotyledons are formed the diagram uh, in the diagram this is the fetal surface and greenish one this is the maternal surface 
from the mater maternal surface which is formed by the decidua and what is decidua after implantation the uterine endometrium is called as decidua so from the uterine endometrium or the decidua the uterine septums are coming these are coming into the intervillous space these brownish these are the villi and in between the villi whitish part is the intervillous space so the greenish septa which are arising from the maternal surface or the uterine endometrium these are called as endometrial septum which are uh, going uh, coming towards the fetal surface and they are they are uh, entering into the inter uh, intervillous space and they are dividing the maternal surface like the like this into the cotyledons so maternal surface has been divided into 15 to 20 cotyledons and each cotyledon having anchoring villi 2 to 3 number of anchoring villi are there in each cotyledons so how the maternal uh, how the cotyledons are formed Meta these are on the the surface this these septas are coming and they are growing in the intervillous space and they are dividing the the surface into cotyledons and maternal cotyledons are 15 to 20 in number now coming to the fetal surface this is the fetal surface and this surface is smooth and covered with amnion and umbilical cord is attached on this surface and fetal part of the placenta is formed by the chorion frondosum or the chorion plate so this part is chorion plate and from the chorion plate 40 to 60 extensions are going or arising and they are moving towards the decidua bacillus so this is decidua bacillus and from the maternal surface from the fe sorry from the fetal surface extensions are arising and they are growing towards the decidua bacillus and the extensions which reach up to the decidua bacillus they are called as anchoring villi so they are anchoring the fetal surface with the maternal surface are called as anchoring villi and the villi which are not reaching and they are running all into the intervillous space they are called as floating villi in this diagram you can see better that this is the fetal surface and this is the maternal surface fetal surface or the chorion frondosum and maternal surface which is the decidua and from the fetal surface villi are going or the chorionic villi are going and this trunk of the villi is called as truncus curiae it ramify just like the branches of tree and then it is called as ramus curiae and this ramus curiae will further divide and divide and that is called as ramuli curiae and this ramuli these ramuli curiae are attached to the decidua bacillus okay so and this villi which are uh, attached to the decidua bacillus they will form the anchoring villi and some villi which are floating in the intervillous space this is intervillous space so in the interval space with the uh, the villi which are floating are called as free villi or the floating villi so the structure of the fetal cotyledon is the stem villi then uh, which will further divide to form the ramus curiae and it will further divide and divide to form the ramuli curiae and the villi which are attached to the decidua bacillus it is reaching up to the decidua bacillus is called as anchoring villi and the villi which are floating in the intervillous space and these are called as floating villi now the maternal surface we have shown that uh, we have seen that it is rough and irregular on the maternal surface 15 to 20 maternal cotyledons are there and they are formed due to extensions of the decidua uh, and that is called as endometrial septum and each and there are 15 to 20 feet cot maternal cotyledons are there and each cotyledons having 2 to 3 anchoring villi now formation of cytotrophoblastic shell this is the fetal surface and this is cytotrophoblast and below beneath it is the greenish one is the extraembryonic mesoderm 
from the cytotoplast extensions are going towards the decidua bacillus and form a shell or the covering on the uh, that structure and that is called as cytotrophoblastic shell so it will divide the syncytial trophoblast into two layer one layer which is outside the cytotrophoblast that is called as fibrinoid degeneration of the there will be fibrinoid degeneration of the syncytial trophoblast layer that is called as netabux layer and the layer of the syncytial trophoblast which is beneath the cytotrophoblast that is called as Ro rohers striae so this layer is called as rohers striae and this is called as netabux layer which undergoes fibrinoid degeneration and the extension of the, so the cytotrophoblast into the syncytial trophoblast like this and they will merge with each other to form a shell or the covering uh, that is called as uh, cytotrophoblastic shell here in this diagram you can see the structure of placenta the, uh, from above downwards above is the myometrium then comes the endometrium of the uterus endometrium uh, during a uh, implantation is in in secretory stage so blood vessels and the uterine glands are in secretory condition or you can say blood vessels are much proliferated and uh, blood and glands are very much edematous uh, uh, they are a proliferated and edematous endometrium and this part of the placenta is called as basal plate and the, the this is the fetal part that is called as chorion plate so the basal plate in this is the endometrium and here from uh, we if we start from the fetal surface this is amnion then after the amnion there is extra embryonic mesoderm and in the extra embryonic mesoderm fetal blood vessels are there because it is uh, this extra embryonic mesoderm is forming the umbilical cord and the fetal blood vessels are extending into the extra embryonic mesoderm so this is the chorionic villi and uh, the layers from below upwards or the from fetal to maternal surface first is the amnion then extra embryonic mesoderm which contain the fetal blood vessels then comes the cytotrophoblast which is forming the projections projections towards the decidua and it is covered by syncytial trophoblast and in this the extra embryonic mesoderm is invaginating and the fetal blood vessels has been grown into the extra embryonic mesoderm so now the tertiary villi has been formed so what are the layers of this tertiary villi this is uh, outer to inner syncytial then cyto then extra embryonic mesoderm and the fetal blood vessels containing endothelium and the basement membrane and outside the villi in between or you can say in between two villi there is intervillous space this is the intervillous space which is filled by maternal blood vessels because this syncytial trophoblast will erode the fetal blood vessels so the from the eroded spiral arteries the blood will come into the intervillous 